All right, systems linear equalities. Um, we are going to be looking at uh, graphs of, um, of certain lines that would represent a situation. And the inequalities part here is different than equations. Uh, the equation would be all the values on the line that we would graph to represent the situation. Inequalities would basically be representing the points that are either above the line or below the line. And it could include the line itself too, but we're talking about sort of a larger set of possibilities when we're talking about inequalities. We're going to do the, uh, the chapter opener in a second here. Um, we're going to be modeling and solving problems algebraically and graphically using these inequalities and in two variables. Also, um, modeling and solving problems algebraically and graphically using uh, systems okay, of linear inequalities, which means that's more than one inequality at a time. And we're going to be solving optimization problems using linear programming. In, uh, in calculus, we use calculus to solve optimization problems. Um, we differentiate. Uh, this is foundation, so this would be probably your only, if you don't take the pre-calculus and calculus courses, um, this, this will be your only kind of view of optimization. And so we'll do it a, uh, a way with uh, systems of linear inequalities. And if you are taking calculus, then um, we'll use derivatives and different methods in calculus to do similar things. So anyways, that's kind of what we're looking at here. And um, yeah, look at all the food there. And uh, we're going to do this, the uh, chapter opener. Uh, if, you want, if, you had a, if you had a certain amount of money and you went to the store to buy meat, you'd have to do some of these calculations that we're going to formalize here in this chapter. You'd have to do some of that in your head. If you had, if you had 10 bucks and your mom sent you to the store to get sandwich meat for, for your lunches or whatever, and she said you can get uh, you know, two kinds of meat, just go ahead and get whatever, whatever you want, but you know, spend no more than 10 bucks. That's exactly the type of, of, uh, type of problem we're, we're doing here. Okay, so if, if uh, ham was really cheap and turkey was really expensive, right, you could get a little bit of turkey and a little bit of ham but how much of each would kind of add up to close to 10, right? So this is the kind of thinking that we're, we're looking at. So let's take a look at, okay, here's our number six. Let's get to our uh, textbook here, which is right here. Let's do this getting started activity. How many of you have jobs here in this class? How many of you have a job that you're working at right now? Okay, not too many, okay, a few of you. All right, so this is a story uh, about Marnie. She has two part-time jobs, and we're going to explore this uh, uh, together in class here. So balancing two part-time jobs. So Marnie has two part-time jobs. She earns minimum wage working at the information desk in a hospital and $4 above minimum wage helping with her mother's house cleaning business. Marnie works in whole hour increments only, so no half hours or three quarter hours. She enjoys the work at the hospital more than the house cleaning, but does not work more than 15 hours a week since she often has a lot of homework and she plays in her school's volleyball team. Okay, so that's the situation. She's got two jobs. Um, one pays a little more than the other. One's a little more enjoyable than the other. So what she has to do is she has to figure out sort of what her plan is for how much she works at each job. Okay? All right. So how many hours can Marnie work at the hospital to earn at least 160 bucks a week? Um, I think since the writing of this textbook, minimum wage has gone up a little bit. I looked that up. Does anyone know what minimum wage is? You, those of you that are working, are you working? Ten seventy-five. Uh, no, I think it's right now. It's about ten ninety-six is what I looked up. So that's in twenty seventeen. Uh, ten ninety-six. So that's minimum wage. And um, so what I've done is I've changed this. I've upped this a little bit. Copy this into our notes, and we're going to change that to two hundred dollars a week because um, that'll work a little bit better with this. So let's work through this uh, just a little bit. I'll, I'll be asking you questions and we'll kind of do this together. Okay. So how many hours can money work at the hospital and earn at least $200 a week? So predict the solution to this problem. Explain your prediction. All right. So she's got a total of 15 hours, right? And let's assume that she wants to uh, work at the hospital because that's what she enjoys more, but working with her mom pays a little bit more. So what kind of combinations of hours could she work that would get her at least $200 a week? Some ideas. So job A, so that pays uh, 1096, okay? So that's, th that's at the hospital. So these would be hours for the hospital. 
and then 1496 would be hours uh, with her mom. Okay, so two jobs, and we got to make sure that these hours that we put in here don't add up to more than 15. Okay, so let's say she wants to work a little bit at each. What are what are some combinations? Give me a combination. Yeah. If she works five at the hospital and ten at the mom. Okay, five here and ten here. Okay, so. Okay, so let's test that out. What's uh, 10.96 times 5? So let me just grab that in your calculator real quick here. Tell me what that is. Okay, so $54.80, right? Uh, and then at the hospital times 10, well, this one's easy. Just move the decimal place over, I guess. That's 149.60, uh, right? Okay. So you add those two up, and you're going to get just a little bit over 200, right? That works out pretty good. Now, what is this exactly then? Or 103, 104.40, something like that? Is that right? 104.40? 204, sorry, 204.40. Is that right? Just did it in my head. Okay, so that works, okay, but uh, there are other combinations as well, right? And you have to keep in mind that Marnie likes working at the hospital a lot more. This is hospital here. So she likes working at the hospital more. So could she up those hours? because it's a little bit more enjoyable work, and down the hours that pay more, but still make 200. So let's do some other combinations. Um, what if we did something a little bit closer to an even number, like uh, you know seven and eight or something? Would that work? So if we did eight here and seven here, go ahead and do that calculation and find out what the total would be for that one. Okay, so if we take a look at this, you know, she enjoys working at the hospital a little bit more, so would this work? Would she make the $200 a week if we did this? We add those two up, we get actually one ninety-two forty. So this wouldn't quite help her to meet her goal, right? So how do we know sort of what the, uh, what the best combination would be? The other one was pretty good, it was just over 200, but there was quite an imbalance of hours there, so um, you know, we could keep trying this over and over and over, um, but that, so that would be A, we could predict solutions. Um, but let's take a look at B here now. If Marnie works five hours at the hospital, how many hours will she work for her mother? Will she earn at least this 200 bucks? So five hours at the hospital, can't remember what our first one was now, was it five and 10? Yeah. Did we do that? Okay, so we did five and 10 at the beginning, and we found that she did make over 200 bucks, right? That one actually did work, five and 10. So notice what we're doing here, we're replacing um, values for um, the number of hours at each, right? So what's staying the same is uh, the, 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 the wage, right, what she would make per hour. What's changing or what's varying would be the number of hours at the hospital, the number of hours with her mom, okay? So you want to keep that in mind. And, and of course, what are we comparing? We're comparing this to the $200 in the question, right? So when we add up the money that she would make at each job, what we're considering is that that has to be more than or equal to what? $200, that's the goal, okay? So, so right now, and I might be skipping ahead here, which I kind of am, um, what type of linear inequality is being described? Um, we talked about what a linear equality is just briefly. Uh, it basically is like an equation, except you can have as well as being equal, you can also have greater than or less than as well. And so this is our inequality, really. And with the variables substituted in, okay, so I'm kind of piecing this together. So this would be hospital, and this would be mom's work, let's say, right? So there's two variables there. So the wage that she would earn at the hospital, the number of hours at the hospital. Multiply those, you get the money she would make at the hospital. You add to that the, the uh, wage with her mom and the number of hours worked with her mom, multiply those together, you get the money she makes with mom. And then we can compare those to see if it's greater than or equal to, to 200. Okay, we good so far? Yeah. So the E says use a variable to represent the number of hours that Marnie works at the hospital. Use the same variable to create an expression for the number of hours that she works with her mom. So what we want to try and do is we want to try and get an equation to be uh, one variable only. Okay, one variable only. So if we've got 10.96H and we've got 14.96 times the number of hours she works with her mom, is there a way that I can write this inequality with this variable or this expression only involving H? 
So what you have to do is you have to look at what the constraint sort of equation is. So there's the value here, but there's another bit of information that we were given, right? Um, what's the other bit of information that we were given in that question? That she only wants to work what? <coughs> a total of 15 hours a week, or, or no more than that, right? Because she's in school and she's got commitments. Okay, no problem. So what I know, and here's the constraint equation, is that H plus M, the hours that the hospital and the hours with mom, um, have to be no more than 15, right? So let's say the maximum is 15. So how could I rewrite this to make it uh, only in terms of H? Well, if I let M equal 15 minus H, right? So we have hours of the hospital, and then we have the difference between 15 maximum and the hours of the hospital. That would be equal to the mom, uh, the mom's work. That make sense? Okay. So what goes in here? 15 minus H. All right. So we're kind of combining the value equation, inequality, I guess, with the, uh, um, the number of hours equation, or the number of hours inequality, really because it's got to be less than or equal to 15, really. So, so this is what we're going to put. Okay? All right. Okay, we're getting somewhere here. We're getting somewhere here. Let's uh, ask, uh, answer a few more questions about this situation, though. To what set of numbers uh, does the variable belong to? So natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational, um, real numbers. What are we talking about here for this question? Integers, okay. Integers is a vote, okay. Agree with integers. So what we're asking for is what's the possible values for the variable? What's the domain here? So integers would include negative numbers as well. Can we work a negative number of hours somewhere? I guess not, not negative, right? <laughs> so you're close. Um, natural numbers start at 1 and go up. Whole numbers start at 0 and go up uh, with no decimals. So integers, good guess, but we, we don't really want to include the negatives. Does that make sense? So are we talking about natural numbers or whole numbers? And she doesn't work fractions of hours, so we're, get, we're getting rid of the rationals, right? And negatives. So is it natural or whole numbers? Good question, hey? Does she have to work at both places? Was that part of the question? Mm -hmm. I guess, I don't think it was. I don't think she said she needs to work at both places, although she does probably wants to keep up her hours. So um, so she could work, uh, it probably could be whole numbers, right? The number of hours at the hospital or with her mom could be zero. So anyway, just thinking about what's, uh, uh, what the domain is, that's important too. Okay. So write linear inequality to express Marnie's situation. Okay, we kind of did that. Uh, solve the linear inequality. Oh, represent the solution on a number line. Okay. If we were to solve this inequality, how would we uh, how would we do that? How would we solve the inequality? So here's the inequality, and what does it mean to solve something like an equation or an inequality? What does solving actually mean? What does what does solving it mean? Yeah. Isolating the variable, yeah, and solving for the variable. So we have one variable here. Um, when we have an e inequality, you treat it just like an equation, except when you multiply or divide by what? A negative, then what do you do if that happens? Yeah, then you've got to flip the sign around. Okay, If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you flip the sign around. Okay, So just take a minute and solve this inequality algebraically. Okay, Isolate for H. You're going to have to do some multiplication here, distribute, gather like terms, and solve for H. Okay, so up to this point when you expand that out, here's, uh, here's a point where we're dividing by negative 4 to isolate for that H. So that's when you got to make sure you switch your signs around. So it's going to be H is less than or equal to, this is going to be positive, should be about 6.1. Okay, so you ma manipulate that inequality and you get this. So h is less than or equal to 6.1. So what does that mean? 
What, is, what does this mean for this question? Can anyone explain that? Yep. Um, she has to work at the hospital less than six hours. Okay. So in order to meet her goal of this right here, making more than or equal to $200, her hours at the hospital have to be less than or equal to 6.1 hours. So if we're talking about whole hour increments, we can say 6, right? So she can work 6 hours at the hospital at most um, in order to still meet her goal. If she works more than that, she's taking away hours from a better paying job. So she's going to earn a little bit less. So that's, that's kind of how that worked. And so if she wants to work as much as she can at the hospital, she'll go uh, 6 and 9. Right, six hours at the hospital, nine with her mom. That will be the most hours at the more enjoyable job, and so on. And she still meet her goal. Okay. So there's a lot of other factors that weren't included in this question, but that would be an example of how a linear inequality could be used to solve a, a real life example. Okay. So any questions about that? Okay. So again, we talked about linear inequality here, uh, what that means. We've uh, um, taken a real life situation and we've used that. So that's your kind of getting started activity there. And we'll move to 6.1 here.